I want to ask Jessica, I want you to come and play this morning. I want you to play throughout the whole time. That song was so prophetic right there. So prophetic right there. So prophetic. God has a rhema word for the people of God this morning. Today's going to be extremely different, very different. Not going to preach like I normally preach. Somebody in this house has been saying, God, I need to see a move by you. Somebody in this house is just saying, God, I need to see you show yourself strong in this house today. Somebody has been talking to God, and God has spoken to me. Somebody has said, God, I need for you to reveal yourself to me. God, I need a word. God, I need to know that you're genuine. God, I need to know that you're with me. See, God has been, you've been speaking to God. And God spoke to me. I recognize that what's about to take place this morning is not normally how we do it, but so what about normal? It's all about moving with the flow of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, I'm going to see a move of God this morning. I'm going to receive a touch from God this morning. I want you guys to to work with me this morning. I want you to name some specific times, whether or not you can feel it, but when the presence of God is among you. I want you to just just say it. I want you to name some specific times when you know the presence of God is among you, whether you can, how many of you know that you're not going to always feel God's presence? But just because you don't feel God's presence doesn't mean that God's presence isn't with you. But I want you to name specifically some times where, you, where the presence of God is, is there, is among you. Anybody? Praise and worship. Praise and worship. What, what was that? Devotion time. Somebody else? Work. What, what, what else? Laying down in my home, in your health, when you're praying, when you're fasting, driving in your car. I like that. When, when else do you sense the presence of God? When else is the, is the presence of God there among you? When I call him. In the house of God. Yes, ma'am. Say that again. When I begin to moan and cry out to God, somebody said in my place, right? In the shower. Somebody else. Who said all the time? Wendy said all the time. I'm going to go straight into the Word this morning. The Israelites have been released from Egypt, and they're en route to the Promised Land and to the land of Canaan that flows with milk and honey. To that promised land. Somebody say that promised land. You know the story. They weren't supposed to be wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. There was a set time that they would leave one place to the next to get to Canaan. But because of disobedience, they found themselves wandering, wandering, and wandering for 40 years. And that generation died off in the wilderness. Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20, starting with verse number 1. Numbers chapter 20, starting with verse number 1. For those of you that may not have your Bibles, you can follow along with us up on the screen. And I do apologize that it's partially cut off. Well, at least it is for me back there, so you're fine up here. Everybody there? If you need a few more seconds, say hold up. Numbers chapter 20, starting with verse number 1. I'm going to read to you from the New Living Translation. The Bible says, In the first month of the year, the whole community of Israel arrived in the wilderness of Zen and camped at Kadesh. While they were there, Miriam died and was buried. 
This is really critical right here. There was no water for the people to drink at that place. They're traveling from Egypt on their way to the promised land. They've been out there for about two months. And the Bible says when they arrived to this place where they're going to camp out for a set time, there was no water for the place. So what happens when there's no water? The people die. Remember, their animals were there. This was over a million people that crossed the Red Sea, and their animals came with them. So now they're in this desert. They've been led by Moses, and they come into the desert of Zen, and the Bible says there is no water for the people to drink at that place. So they rebelled against Moses and Aaron. The people blamed Moses and said, if Only we had died in the Lord's presence with our brothers. Why have you, Moses, brought the congregation of the Lord's people into this wilderness to die, along with all of our livestock? Why did you make us leave Egypt and bring us here to this terrible place? This land has no grain, it has no figs, it has no grapes, there's no pomegranates and no water to drink. Moses, you have messed up. In essence, what they were saying, God, you have messed up because Moses was being led by Almighty God. Verse 6, Moses and Aaron turned away from the people and went to the tabernacle and went to the entrance of the tabernacle where they fell on their face, where they fell face down to the ground. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared unto them. Then the glorious presence, where were they at when this happened? Were they in the promised land of Canaan? Were were they back in Egypt where they were being fed probably multiple meals per day? No, they were in the desert. They were in the wilderness. They were in a foreign land in which they did not want to be, and they were not happy about it. They were afraid that they were going to die of, of, of dehydration and their animals, then their kids, and their wives. Everyone was going to die in the desert, they thought. They were in a horrible place in their lives, but all of a sudden, the presence of God was there. They weren't in a church. It wasn't during praise and worship. It it, it wasn't in their house. It wasn't while they were taking a shower. It wasn't during the time of obedience. In fact, they were being disobedient. That the presence of God showed up in their life. And the Lord said unto Moses, verse number 7, And the Lord said unto Moses, You and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community. As the people watch, Moses and Aaron speak to the rock. Now, I'm not going to go into this. You know the story. Moses, instead of, instead of Moses speaking to the rock, the Bible says that Moses hit the rock twice. Now, even though he was disobedient, God still allowed water to come gushing out of this rock. But Moses had to pay for what he had done. That's not what I'm preaching on today. But my whole point is, and the Lord said unto Moses, you and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community. As the people watch, speak to the rock over there, and it will pour out its water. You will provide enough water from the rock to satisfy the whole community and their livestock. Please hear my next point. One of the most overlooked and unrecognized moments in which the presence of God is among us Don't put it up yet. Don't put it up yet. One of the most overlooked and unrecognized moments in which the presence of God is among us is during times of adversity. But we overlook the presence of God. We don't recognize the presence of God. And there's a reason behind that. Yes, we recognize the presence of God. We, we, we were in the presence of God a few minutes ago, right? He was here in a powerful, tangible, strong, and mighty way. 
when everything is going, you're great, your emotions are high, your, your, your mindset has changed, you're, you're, you're just elevated, and God is everywhere. Oh, but how that changes when you're going through moments of adversity to get some bad news from the doctor. When your kids don't want to act right, when your spouse don't want to act right, when that stronghold that, that has you seems to want to suck the life out of you. God is even there in that moment. Well, preacher, how do you know? Because I serve a God that cannot lie. And my God says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Even when you mess up, God, the Holy Spirit, is still there. Even when you blow it, God is still there. How do I know? Because I've messed up, just like you've messed up. But yet the Holy Spirit touches my heart, convicts my heart towards I get things right with God. But yet it's going through those moments of adversity, going through the storms of life. Those moments where you're so caught up in your emotions, those moments where you don't know what to do, those moments where you don't know where to turn, those moments where you feel so absolutely hopeless. Yes, even in those moments, God is right there. In those moments of your disobedience, God is right there. In those moments of your rebellion, God is right there. In those moments when you're praying and praying and praying and believing God for whatever it is, but you ain't heard a word. Just because you ain't heard a word don't mean he ain't talking. Just because you ain't heard a word don't mean he's not there. God is a God that he cannot lie. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God told Joshua, God told Joshua, as I was with Moses, I am going to be with you. And everywhere you place your feet, that property belongs to you. Do you really think that we serve a God that would abandon you during some of the roughest times of your life? Anybody and everybody can show up when all is going well in your life. But what about when everything around you begins to come crumbling to the ground? See, those are times that you feel like nobody's around. And maybe they aren't. But let me tell you about somebody <clears throat> who is. His name is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God that will not leave you alone. Even when you run away from God, you can't run away from God. Because when you get there, guess who's sitting down waiting on you? Can I get a witness? Even when you think you're running away from God, God is sitting right there. Have you ever done something you knew you had no business doing? You're just going to kind of ignore God? You know you can't ignore God. You can try to deny God, but you can't ignore God. You ever had your little old self in some place you ain't had no business having your little old self? And you just didn't feel right inside of your little old self? It's called the Holy Spirit. It's called convicting your heart. So you get your little old self up and get your little old self right out of there. And get back into the place where you're supposed to thank God for the Holy Spirit. Even when it don't feel good. Here's my title. Uh, let, let me go back. Let me go back. One of the most overlooked and unrecognized moments in which the presence of God is among us is during times of adversity. Why is that? Why, why is that? Why in the world, why is it that we overlook and we don't recognize God's presence in some of the most difficult times in our life, in the natural as a child. When your kid is going through, as a mother, as a father, you will not abandon your kids. Even when you know they're wrong, yes, you'll show them some tough love, right? You'll show them some tough, anybody been shown any tough love? I've shown mine some tough love. And I'll continue to show mine some tough love, but I'll never, ever abandon my girls. 
Why? Because my girls came from above. They came from God, and they're my responsibility until the day they take their last breath to be their father. Why is it that we overlook and unrecognize the presence of God during moments of adversity? Number one, we get too caught up in what's going on around us. Number two, we get too caught up in our feelings and emotions to where God appears to be invisible. God, I don't hear you. God, I don't see you. God, I don't feel you. Just because you don't see, hear, and feel doesn't mean that God is not there. Here's my title. Even when we don't see or feel him, he's present. Even when we don't see and feel him, he's present. I'm going to conclude with Psalms chapter 139. Some of the most powerful scripture in the entire Bible. Psalms 139 Starting with verse number one. This is what David said. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart. I hear some pages turn. I'll wait for you to get there. Psalms 139. Psalms 139. Starting with verse number one. Even David went through moments of discouragement. Even David went through moments where he felt like God had abandoned him. And he cried out to God. Verse number one, oh Lord, you have examined my heart and God, you know every single thing about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. One translation says, God, you know my thoughts even before I receive my thoughts. God, you know what I'm going to think even before I think it. Verse three, you see me when I travel. And when I rest at home, you know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. God, you know everything that there is to be known about me. God knows what you're going to say next week. God knows what you're going to say next month. God knows everything there is to be known about you. Why? Because God is in tune with you. Because God is head over heels in love with you. That doesn't sound like a person that would abandon you during the roughest moments of your life to me. You go before me and follow me. I love that. You go before me and follow me. Man, I've got protection in front and the back. You best believe on both sides and above. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, God, you beat me there. If I go down to the grave, God, how you get there so fast? Even there, God, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there, Your hand will guide me. Your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Somebody in this house right now, you're going through a very discouraging time in your life. You're going through a very emotionally traumatic moment in your life. How do I know? Because God the Holy Spirit has revealed to me. God spoke to my heart and said that someone would be here, maybe more, maybe more than one of you, that this morning, this word would speak directly to your heart. You feel isolated. You feel abandoned. You feel alone. 
and you just need a touch from God this morning. You just need God to say, you're not alone, and I'm going to confirm it. I'm going to reveal myself to you in this house today through the Word of God. God wants you to know you're not by yourself. God wants you to know that regardless of what you're dealing with, you're not alone. Somebody has said, God, I just need to know that in this moment, I'm not alone. God, I don't feel you. God, God, God I, I don't see. I don't see. I'm, I'm, so much is going on on the inside of me. God, I, I just feel lost. I feel abandoned. God wants you to know this morning that through this word, that he's speaking directly to you, that you're not alone. He's right there. You've made it as far as you have because he's been right there. You'll overcome what you're going through. Did you hear that? You'll overcome what you're going through because he will be right there. Every head bowed. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. And I'm going to ask that nobody look around.